my fellow Americans over the past three and a half years, we have made great progress as a nation. Today, America has the <laughs> strongest economy in the world. We've made historical investments in rebuilding our nation and lowering prescription drug costs for seniors and in expanding affordable health care to a record number of Americans. We provided critical, critically needed care to a million veterans exposed to toxic substances. Passed the first gun safety law in 30 years, appointed the first African-American woman to the Supreme Court and passed the most significant climate legislation in the history of the world. America has never been better position to lead than we are today. I know none of this could have done without you, the American people. Together, we overcame a once in a century pandemic and the worst uh, economic crisis since the Great Depression. We've protected and preserved our democracy and we've revitalized and strengthened our alliances around the world. It has been my greatest honor of my life to serve as your president. And while it has been my intention to seek Re-election, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. I will speak to the nation later this week in more detail about my decision. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude to all those who have worked so hard to see me re-elected. I want to thank Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in all this work and let me express my heartfelt appreciation for the American people, for the faith and trust you have placed in me. I believe today what I always have, that there is nothing America can't do. When uh, we do it together, we just have to remember we are the United States of America. All right, so there you have it, Manny. I dropped out, man. Just want to get you guys thoughts real quick if you have any. Um, apparently, he's endorsing. Kamala Harris. Uh, I'm not really sure how strong that is going to be uh, with America, seeing how most men do not want to see a woman uh, lead our country. And that's, I'm just speaking just what basically what I hear and what I see. Not saying that she can't, but this is what um, I'm hearing a lot of people say. So what are you guys' thoughts about it? I mean, the democracy hasn't been preserved. This is a uh, tyranny. Um, <laughs> uh, Trump is going to win. Um, I don't think I, that's, I think that's all I have to say on that. Yeah, I got it. I mean, I just want to speak on the wordplay, you know, because I do pick up, you know, my parents' prescriptions, take them to their doctor's appointments. So if it's the $35 for the prescription drugs, you know, he crammed that in there and made sure. But see, what they don't tell you is this $35 price, right? So say if your parent, say if your dad has diabetes and he gets 10 vials of insulin, okay, it's going to be $35, the same price. We lowered this price. But now what they're doing is they're limiting the quantity that you receive for $35. So now you got to go back twice. So now you were once getting 10 vials for $35. Now they're giving you four or five. Then you got to go back and it's 35 again. And you go back and it's 35 again. So he'll promote that as, oh, you know, I'm discounting the prices of prescription drugs for senior citizens. But in reality, you know, they're lowering the quantity. So the amount of times that you come back for those drugs are more, which essentially you're not really cutting nothing, you know. It's just word, word play. Absolutely. This uh, is, oh, I think ahead. we should stay on the topic, though. I was going to say, this is this is a, a heavy squandering of the Democratic Party right now at this point. Because y'all didn't actually, y'all knew, first of all, having Biden run in 2020 was already a bad idea to begin with. We already knew his age and the things. We knew what was coming down the pipeline. So having him run then was already problematic. Kamala Harris has worse polling numbers than Biden. Right? <laughs> and the reason why he has to endorse her is because there's nobody else. And they squandered that opportunity because even during the primaries, y'all never put anybody out there to be a competitor for the Democratic, uh, Democratic Party outside of y'all tried to ride the Biden train. And y'all rode it right into a brick wall. So <laughs> unfortunately, and I'm and, and and I'm mostly democratic, you know what I mean? So 
So unfortunately, y'all didn't run on any policies. Y'all didn't run on anything other than the other side is bad. Y'all ran on, y'all y'all ran on trust us, trust us, uh, just trust me, bro. <laughs> and this is what you get. So now, you're, unfortunately, you're gonna lose in 2024. Unfortunately, that is next time sure. maybe you should run on something better than I'm. Be uh, I, I can't be much worse. I'm. I'm not worse than Donald Trump. <laughs> that is okay, a so fact. This is this, this has been going on. They they they've been doing this for the last 12 years. So let, let's just be honest. It's the last 12 years the Democratic Party been been, been messing up, screwing up, and, and doing this shit. It's been the last 12 years. So, the, the, you know, four years of Biden, you know, saying they didn't do it. Trump won because we didn't have competent, uh, you didn't have competent representative Democrat. And then even during the time when, when Obama was there, y'all didn't start to bring out somebody else relevant that could probably even, you know, really run and win. I mean, Trump won the fact that... <laughs> You said what? He won because I was going to say that Trump I works. Said, I mean, he's yeah, not even Trump a politician. And that's why he yeah. he's, he's a businessman, and America is a corporation. And nobody wanted. He, he oh, dealt with the market. He, 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 he was the, 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 the black Trump, folks. Was, you know what I mean? Yeah. He did everything that he needed. He set his ducks in a row. Like, Trump, because he did he, he what he needed to do. First, Trump and was on the. About to be all hail King Trump because that man is going to be a king, not a president. They that's, already that's not ready. how the constitution works. I mean, I get it, I, it sounds good, but there was a bill passed a little while ago. I'm pretty sure no one was paying attention to it that that's, pretty much said that every, every crime works. that he I understand, I, I get it, right? <laughs> it may not be how the constitution works, but there are things that are happening right under our noses that people are not paying attention to because folks are so busy, focused, tapped into. To things that that aren't that mean, mean nothing in the grand scheme of things, he got he got pardoned for all his crimes while he was in office, and and that kind of set the tone for every every other president that what, comes what into office. To get for? All right, hold one second. No, can I? I just I just want to finish. Well, Lady okay? T, I thought you was done. I thought you was out of it because you said you was out of it. I'll start to speak. Then you yeah, cut in you and just took over. You know what, Hank? You're right. Go ahead. You got it, beloved. I forgive you though, because that's the that's the type of man I am. So, All right, and I apologize. Again, that's the type of woman I am. You got it. Right on. Right on. So, for the last twelve years, you know they've been they've been they, the the Democratic Party has been ruining this shit. Even towards even the last election with with Obama, he he wasn't able to do anything. They punked his ass. They punked the shit out of his ass when they allowed him to do anything. They told him he wasn't gonna do shit, and they held to their word. So now we didn't have nobody to run in that next election. We had Trump and then you had Hillary. Hillary wasn't going to be a factor because people was tired of Hillary when he was in there with Bill Clinton. Make sure you think Hillary's going to win or win. Now what they probably should have, we did as Democratic, they probably should allow Bernie Sanders. I would have been okay with that. I would have been okay. Bernie with Sanders instead we didn't have that. Yeah, I know, but, but that, unfortunately we didn't have that. So we got what we got with, with, with Donald Trump. Like I said, Donald Trump was smart. Yes, he was, because he was part of the Democratic Party. He was rolling with most of the, most of the times. He said, but I guess what? I can't win over here, but I can win under the Republican ticket. And so that's where he went. That's a smart move. And now guess what? He's going to get reelected. Even after all this bad publicity, even after all the bullshit he's supposedly done, He's going to get reelected. I don't care if if Biden was healthy, as, as strong as a horse, he still would have lost because he sold a lot of dreams he never lived up to. He, he got, I voted for his weak ass, and I apologize to the American people. That's part of my fault. I voted for his weak ass because he's talking about student loan forgiveness. He came nowhere near having student loan forgiveness. <laughs> not even close, bro. Not <laughs> no, not even close. Well, That's his move, y'all. I I got my Hold on, on, let me finish. Let me finish. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. I know. I got you. I'm almost finished. I'm, you could, you could, you could, you could debate me and prove me wrong in a second. He didn't do that for me. I didn't see it. I didn't see the benefits of it. He's also challenged me, my blackness, if I don't vote for his weak ass. <laughs> and guess what? We all fell for that bullshit. What? What man out in the street gonna sit there and challenge you? Talking about you ain't black. Man, we've been ready to say cut you out and don't have nothing to do with him. Not us. 
He went in there, pulled the level, and voted for his ass anyway because he challenged our blackness. Come on, people. we got to do this. We got to do better. And I'll tell you this: as far as student loan forgiveness, the thing that the only thing that he did because the law that was that that was there was always there. And I worked in student loan collection, so I knew about this. The law was always there that after a certain amount of years, your student loans get forgiveness. Uh, or if you work in a public service, your student loans get forgiven after 10 years. All he did was push through all the people that were supposed to have their loans forgiven based off the law that was at hand. He didn't run on I was gonna gonna, I was just gonna uphold the 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 student loan forgiveness program that was already in place. He ran by saying, I'm going to forgive all y'all student loan debt. That's what he ran on. He didn't run on, oh, we're going to just uphold the, the, the current laws that are in place as far as student loan forgiveness. And that's what, and like Hank, that's what I was expecting. I was expecting him to come through and be like, all right, we're going we gonna to forgive all student loan debt. That ain't what he did. He just basically said, okay, well, let's just make sure the people that qualify for their student loan forgiveness get their student loans forgiven. So, for instance, that was people who were public service after 10 years. That's, that was people who were on IDRs for 25 years. And that was people that were um, that were uh, victims of um, uh, what is it, uh, cash cash schools or something like that, and then also people who were on disability. Those are the people that got their student loans forgiven. Outside of that, no. What he promised us was not what we got. And what what Lady T was speaking to, which I believe he was speaking to, was the Supreme Court passing a law that if he handles a crime, if he commits a crime while being the president, he can't be held. It can't be held against him. So say if he's in office and let's just say man, he walks to 125th Street in Harlem and just airs the block out. He can be pardoned for that. Yes, that's exactly what I'm speaking to. It was passed on July 1st, um, Trump versus the United States of America. And it essentially says that um, it grants presidents immunity from prosecution for criminal acts committed while in office. And it gives Donald Trump a free pass for his past crimes. And it also gives future presidents a pass for their crimes while committed in office. So that is not a democracy, okay? Question. So does does it, it, it says Donald Trump is forgiven for all past crimes? Yes, the convicted felon has been forgiven for his past crimes. Mm -hmm. All right, our next president, a convicted felon. that so that he can run for president because technically you're not supposed to run for president if you have it. So that's right. why he did that. Which is crazy considering felons can't vote. So- you know, well, no, felons, could have always, uh, felons was always able to run for president. Felons can't vote. Um, and, and I also think that a big part of that is the fact that the case that New York brought up against Trump for what he received the felony for, they, they didn't want to take it on because they knew that it was bullshit. So essentially what all that they're saying is that, OK, well, this on a nation level, this crime that you guys charge him for is honestly irrelevant because he to us didn't break a law that's that's something that that's between y'all so in in the other part too I, I don't think that that is going to allow for him to just put out a hit on somebody in the states i, I think that that's more so focused on uh them taking out the leader of ISIS or Al Qaeda or some shit like that. I, I don't think that that's going to be, um, they'll be immune to, to be in charge for doing something to a, a, to an American citizen. At that point, you're a terrorist. Well, see, here's the thing though. And this may come out. And right now this is allegedly, you know, cause they had a hearing and this may be the reason that Biden stepped down because you know he was giving all that aid to Israel and they had a court hearing indicating everything that they were doing was criminal. So he was pretty much funding war crimes. So, you know, our stations aren't talking about it, but if you listen to, you know, the Russian news channels, the English news channels, you know, they're talking about this is like 
front page news, but us, you know, it's like right. They keep you know, yeah, you know, Jocelyn is about to beat up Amber Rose. You know, that's all we getting blasted. Amber Rose, you know, at the uh, RSC. That's what they're talking about. They're not talking <laughs> about that, but apparently that's why he stepped down because he committed war crimes, and they were about they about to you know. Right and, and, and there's allegations that he had documents that he wasn't supposed to and that got into the hands of somebody else so there, there's a lot of things that that uh that will benefit biden from this very law or bill that that's been passed that that you're saying that trump is going to take the most advantage of now there's a lot of things that's being swept under the rug that Biden has been doing, but due to the media wanting to paint the other person a certain type of way, then that's all that we've been seeing. And even to Hink's point, I, I feel like the Democrats, they they saw what happened with Obama. Obama was voting in and probably had the, the most, he had the most vo votes all throughout uh, US history. They saw how people showed up for him, and a lot of people primarily voted for him realistically because he was black, right? So now the Democrats were able to say, okay, we got our first black president in. And then he got out of office, and then Hillary came. And okay, we we got we got the first black guy in. Let's let's get the first woman in. So then they put Hillary to the forefront. That of course fell through. And then it they got Biden and was like, okay, well. Everybody already knows what Biden is. Uh, Biden was with Obama. So let's get him in and use him to, you know, what I'm saying to push. So it's both both sides play off of off of emotions. But I feel like the, the Democrats, like they they just so boldly pandered to us to strictly just go off of emotions and knowing that we already solely vote for them regardless of what benefits it is that we see they just got us in the bag and we just gonna follow this isn't ain't it crazy how much they do for the black vote meanwhile the black black voters don't realize their value themselves it's it's just a constant it's a constant thing like we allow this country to tell us who we are in the media we and we perpetuate the same things over and over for them right we allow people to tell us that our vote don't count. Meanwhile, they're spending millions and millions of dollars, and no, not millions of dollars, I mean not, they're spending tons of money to get the black vote, right? Yeah. They're, they're doing That's so million. much. To, say again? Yeah. More, more than millions. More than yeah. millions, you're yeah. right. Yeah. Right, like they spent, they spent a lot of money trying to appeal to us and get our vote. But we, a lot, so many of our, so many of us aren't really like <laughs> grasping how important it is for, for us to get on one accord. Like I've been saying this for forever. Like it makes sense for folks to join locally in your cities, uh, in your town halls, have town halls and decide what officials you guys want to put in, we want to put in office, try to actually decide, to decide and put like majority vote toward one person and not allow for them to come in and tell us who, it, no one wants to do it. And it's, it's evident they find more value in us than we're finding in ourselves. And that's not just when it comes to politics. It's just across the yeah, board in general. And, and that's and honestly, that's why I get that's why I come on here and go against a lot of what people say, like a lot of the, the narratives that I hear being pushed on panels and on podcasts are ones that is of limited belief. And we've been so we've been so conditioned to believe that yes we're at the bottom of the totem pole and there's no way that we can that we can move up in it nobody wants to help us we can't help ourselves we got to depend on x y and z we got to do it it's like no nah, bro you can do it we we see people do it all the time every single day but yet we're so blinded by this confusion by blaming the white man, the uh, the Willie Lynch, Jim Crow, I, I get it. All of that shit is detrimental to us. But at what point do we heal from it and grow from it? You know what I'm saying? All that we do when you continue to bring up all the shit that happened, you you you're doing this into the open wound. So when when do you heal? Yeah. From it? 
All right, we're going to finish with Jay, and then we got to transition. Go ahead, Jay. Last point. This is my last thing. The thing that we forget about is it's almost like the Bloods and the Crips, you know, but only in our community are we fighting over blocks and the leaders aren't friends. With Trump, Biden, these, these guys are friends, you know. They play golf together. They hang out at the same country clubs. They at the same parties. They on the same islands. They on the same plane manifesto. These people hang out together. So publicly, you know, they're throwing mud at each other. They're rallying us to fight against or throw dirt on him, throw dirt on him. But behind closed doors, this serves all of them. They're friends. They serving each other. And we're just in the middle being divided into small little, you know, chess pieces. Or who win the Monopoly game? Well, mm-hmm. Jay, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would say that they're friends in, in politics. Um, all of all of those, everybody that's in legislation, legislation, they they are they know that they have to work with each other. So we have to develop and have some type of relationship. Just because, uh, just because me and Jay, just because we're both um, in the house that that doesn't mean that we're friends you know what i'm saying even even in, in the court system a lot of the lawyers and judges they they have to brush shoulders with each other they have to be able to politic and have conversations outside of the court in order to get things passed or get things done or come to a decision so i know if i'm in good standings and i have a good relationship with you it'll be easier for us to come to some type of agreement that 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 doesn't necessarily mean that we're friends. We're just here to get business done. 